that we have um, <clears throat> in this book of the Traveler of the Worlds, Canto Five, we have the Godheads of the Little Life. And so now he's speaking to us about this little being of time, little being of time, this shadow soul. And, uh, you know, Sri Arbindo has so much to tell us about time, but we've covered some of it before, but he does tell us in the synthesis of yoga, time presents itself to human effort as an enemy or a friend, as a resistance, a medium, or an instrument. But always it is really the instrument of the soul. Because we see time in a measured way, but the divine does not see time like that. Time is timeless. And we'll continue. This living dwarf figurehead of darkened spirit, out of its traffic in petty dreams, shall rise. So the traffic is the communication, the exchange in petty dreams shall rise, full stop. Its shape of person and its ego face. Look at these hyphenated lines. Dwarf figurehead, ego face. Divested of this mortal travesty. Let's look into those two definitions. Divested here would be thrown off, put off, put off. It's mortal travesty. Travesty here is the grotesque imitation. The gross, grotesque imitation of something. And uh, that's basically what we are right now. Until we can ascend to these highest levels, above even intuitive mind into overmind. Like a clay troll, needed into a god. Now, in folklore, especially Scandinavian folklore, um, these trolls are friendly or sometimes they're a little mischievous. And they live in caves, they live in hills, they live under bridges. So we are like a clay troll needed into a god. But new made, another hyphenated word, new made in the image of the eternal guest. Now, what is this eternal guest? Priyarabindo tells us in a letter on yoga. He says, when the rishis speak of Indra or Agni or Soma in men, they are speaking of the God in his cosmic presence, power, or function. This is evident from the very language when they speak of Agni as the immortal in mortals, the immortal light in men, the inner, the inner warrior, the guest in human beings. How beautiful. The eternal guest in us is the divine. Nothing less. Right now he's a guest because we really don't know him as a friend or as ourselves. But he is the guest. He is always there. It shall be caught to the breast of a white force and flaming with the paradisal touch in a rose fire of sweet spiritual grace, another hyphenated word, in the red passion 
of its infinite change, quiver, awake, and shudder with ecstasy. This is all going to be ours one day. We really have to understand this. We have to believe it. If we can feel it, that would be even better. In the opposition of the dark forces, that would be best. It's easy to feel it, easier to feel it in the mountains, in the great plains. So, and flaming with the paradisal touch, a paradisal touch, a heavenly touch, in a rose fire of sweet spiritual grace. Here again is Sri Aurobindo's word, sweet. In the red passion of its infinite change, quiver, awake, and shudder with ecstasy. As if reversing a defamation spell. Oh, defamation. Change for the worse. Something that is deformed is ugly. Or at least we see it as ugly. As if reversing a defamation spell, released from the black magic of the night, renouncing servitude to the dim abyss, it shall learn at last who lived within unseen and seized with marvel in the adoring heart to the enthroned child godhead kneel aware. Oh, this, we have to go through some of this. Trembling with beauty and delight and love. He will tell us more in a few moments, but let's go through some of these things. We, we have to understand that this child Godhead is the divine. We can say Krishna also. Mother Sri Aurobindo. To the enthroned, someone who is on a throne, enthroned, child or Godhead, kneel aware, not kneel in ignorance, kneel aware. And then what? Sri tells us in the synthesis of yoga, the Gnostic soul is the child. And he says in letters on yoga again, the child usually signifies the psychic being, newborn in the sense that at last, that it at last comes to the surface. The natural attitude of the psychic being is to feel itself as the child, the son of God, the bhakta. It is a portion of the divine, one in essence, but in the dynamics of the manifestation, there is always, even in identity, a difference. Very important line there. So we'll go on a little bit and see that when that psychic being begins to realize the divine, comes close to the divine, it trembles with beauty and delight and love. But now Sri Aurobindo is going to tell us what we have to do to realize this. But first, the spirit's ascent we must achieve out of the chasm from which our nature rose. The soul, okay, let's just take those two lines. The spirit's ascent we all know that we must achieve. But what is this chasm? from which our nature rose. Well, 
it's like an abyss or a deep gorge. And of course, when we, I was just talking to another student a little while back, you know, when Sri Aurobindo speaks of a child coming into birth and, and crying loudly or screaming, you know, when I was young, every child that was born that I had ever seen cried the moment it came out of the womb. It's not so prominent now with the new beings taking birth, but it still happens. It is a shock. It is something which is so new to us, unless we, re we remember all our past births, and very few do, that we are shocked when we come into this world. And it will take years, generally many years, to realize why we came and what was the work we were given to do on earth. A work unlike any other person's work. That we have to find. But first, the spirit's ascent we must achieve out of the chasm from which our nature rose. The soul must soar sovereign above the form and climb to summits beyond minds half sleep. Our hearts we must inform with heavenly strength, surprise the animal with the occult god. Now I have a word here to share with you that is not defined in the way we usually define it. It is the word inform. In Sri Aurobindo's understanding, complete understanding of English, he gives the following definition. To give form or character to, to impart, to imbue with a quality or an essence. So our far our hearts, we must inform. We're not just giving them information. No, no, no. We're putting a form. We're imparting something into our hearts that has a quality or an essence. Surprise the animal with the occult god. Then, kindling the gold tongue of sacrifice calling the powers of a bright hemisphere we shall shed the discredit of our mortal state make the abysm a road for heaven's descent acquaint our depths with the supernal ray and cleave the darkness with the mystic fire. Um, before I go through this, uh, I think we can get a lot from you, Vladimir, if you would share some Vedic insights. Um, well, this is a totally Vedic passage of the actually reverse, as he says here. Because before we were only the beings which were charged from above, and kind of serving the abyss, but then with this new state of uh, getting this white force, yes, and caught to the breast of a white force and flaming with a parasitical touch in a rose fire of sweet spiritual grace, in the red passion of the infinite change, quiver, awake and shudder with ecstasy, as if reversing a deformation spell. This is uh, when <clears throat> when the psychic is is born, as it were, to our awareness. We can see that we can rise now from the abyss. Uh, 
Before we were serving their base, we were serving the inconscient with all our presence. Now we are coming out of it. This is the reversal movement of our evolutionary awareness of our evolution. And that's what uh, this mystic fire represents, cleaving the darkness. The darkness itself becomes the path to the ascent and to the descent of a new force. Everything is lighting up in this cave of darkness. This is very, very Vedic, very beautiful passage. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. It will shed the discredit of our mortal state. What is the discredit? Well, it's actually a, a loss of esteem or a loss of repute. When our reputation is impaired, that's the discredit. So what is this discredit of our mortal state? but simply ignorance. And of course, wrongdoing. That's another uh, there big is, one. Mm. Yes. There is one more thing which is very puzzling, the enthroned child godhead. Uh, so uh, this, uh, the child godhead <coughs> is enthroned already. He is already, how to say, enthroned for kingdom. He is still a child, but he will grow. This prince, the psychic being, will grow and become the king. And here we already recognize why we are here, what we are here to do, that this child Godhead will grow and will become a king. I, I love the stories about uh, Krishna and his mother. He's eating dirt, soil. And his mother says, what are you doing, Krishna? And he opens his mouth, and his mother sees the whole world in his mouth. And, of course, there's another one that's similar where he yawns, and his mother sees him yawning, and there's the whole universe in his mouth. So... We have to shed, shed, huh? throw off the discredit of our mortal state. We have to make the abysm a road for heaven's descent. Now, the abysm is, of course, often spoken like, spoken of as an abyss, something fathomless, something deep sunken. But it can be also something extremely or hopelessly bad or severe. We have to keep those two definitions in our consciousness. And then after this comma, after descent, he says, acquaint our depths with a supernal ray. Oh my gosh. Now, I have to read just a very brief sentence from Sri Aurobindo's letters on yoga. It has always touched me so deeply. Even if there is much darkness, and this world is full of it, and the physical nature of man also, yet a ray of the true light can prevail eventually against the tenfold darkness. Believe that and cleave to it always. And cleave the darkness with the mystic fire. Now, divine love, he tells us, is at the heart of all creation and the most powerful of all redeeming and creative forces has yet been the least frontally present in earthly life. We use forces of strength, of all kinds of powers, but not divine love. And Mother tells us that divine love is the only thing that can save the world. And we have to be clear, it's not human love. 
I read it fully because it's so important. Yeah. And it speaks of the mystic fire, the mystic flame. Divine love, which is at the heart of all creation and the most powerful of all redeeming and creative forces, has yet been the least frontally present in earthly life, the least successively, successfully redemptive, the least creative. Why? Human nature has been unable to bear it in its purity, for the very reason that it is the most powerful, pure, rare, and intense of all the divine energies. What little could be seized has been corrupted at once into a vital pietistic or ardor, a defenseless religious or ethical sentimentalism a sensuous or even sensual erotic mysticism of the roseate colored mind or passionately turbid life impulse. And with these simulations compensated its inability to house the mystic flame that could rebuild the world with its tongues of sacrifice. Oh. adventuring once more in the natal mist across the dangerous haze the pregnant stir he through the astral chaos soar away mid the gray faces of its demon gods questioned by whispers of its flickering ghosts besieged by sorceries of its fluent force. Well, we have to take those few lines carefully. Adventuring more, once more, in the natal mist. The natal mist is something that accompanies birth. Across the dangerous haze, the pregnant stir, he through the astral chaos, shore away. What an incredible life. First of all, we have the astral. The astral here in this sense is something of the spirit world. He, through the astral chaos, chaos, of course, is disorder, jumble. Shore, cut or cut through something. So look at that line. He, through the astral chaos, shore a way. A way through what? Mid the gray faces of its demon gods. The demon gods are evil spirits, fiends. Now, there is a, a little thing we should cover here. Daemon. D-A-E-M-O-N are guardian spirits, but D-E-M-O-N is an evil spirit, a devil or a fiend. So he shore through this chaos, through this astral chaos. He found a way, he shore through a way. But he had to go amid the faces of its demon gods. It, he had to go by questioned, by whispers of its flickering ghosts. You see what this area is like. It's misty. It's not at all clear what it is. It's uh, ghost-like. Besieged or oh, attacked by sorceries of its fluent force. Now, the sorceries here are the witchcrafts of the fluent force of these flickering ghosts and these demons. Fluent force, inter interesting word here. Figuratively, it means changeable. 
not rigid or fixed. And I think we should stop there for today because we need someone to read. And I would ask Gita Sri if she would read for us. Gita Sri, you are muted and your video is off. Okay. You can put your video on and if you want. This little being of time. Yes. This little being of time, this shadow soul, this living dwarf figure head of darkened spirit out of its traffic in petty dreams shall rise. Its shape of person and its ego face divested of this mortal travesty like a clay troll kneaded into a god, new made in the image of the eternal guest. It shall be caught to the breast of a white force and flaming with the paradisal touch in a rose fire of sweet spiritual grace in the red passion of its infinite change quiver awake and shudder with ecstasy as if reversing a deformation spell released from the black magic of the night renouncing servitude to the dim abyss it shall learn at last who lived within unseen and seized with marvel in the adoring heart to the enthroned child godhead kneel aware trembling with beauty and delight and love but first the spirit's ascent we must achieve out of the chasm from which our nature rose the soul must soar sovereign above the form and climb to summits beyond mind's half sleep our hearts we must inform with heavenly strength surprise the animal with the occult god then needling the gold tongue of sacrifice calling the powers of a bright hemisphere we shall shed the discredit of our mortal state make the abyssum a road for heaven's descent acquaint our depths with the supernal ray and cleave the darkness with the mystic fire adventuring once more in the natal mist across the dangerous haze the pregnant stir he threw the astral chaos shore away mid the gray faces of its demon gods questioned by whispers of its flickering ghosts besieged by sorceries of its fluent force as one who walks unguided through strange fields tending he knows not where nor with what hope he trod a soil that failed beneath his feet and journeyed in stone strength to a fugitive end thank you so much um, the last four lines i hadn't read but we'll pick them up next week and uh, only I'm one reading. small only one small comment to be the tree the the word chasm, the H is not sounded. Okay, thank you. Yeah, not chasm, but chasm. Chasm. Thank Great. you. Great. Very good reading. Thank you all. Any questions from anyone tonight? No questions. So we all know where we're going.
we all don't know where we are going there are, that's why no questions namaste 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 namaste, namaste. namaste.